Hi, welcome to the Light of Deception. Today we're going to continue in our series of walking through the many links at the Light of Deception and navigating through each one of the links. That way it's easier to understand the content and to be able to use the material that's there. So the, the site was open to share my own personal story with Deception, 12 Years of Deception, and to talk about the early deception I fell into as well. Also, it is the overall premise of it was to take it from being deceived into why, what's going on in today's churches, what's going on throughout the world as related to deception. So I did start off with a series called The Many Isms Leading to Deception, talking about political isms, talking about mystical isms. Those are out there for you on this YouTube channel, the Light of Deception YouTube channel. You can find it on the uh, lightofdeception.com under my video segments or under PowerPoint series. Now we're gonna continue in this series, walking through the first, we're at the front page. I did already talk a little bit about why the site was opened. Um, the first link that you'll find on that site on the front page is the free gift of salvation. There's nothing more important than the free gift of salvation. And then the Bible is the second link there, getting back just to the literal translation of the Word of God. Third, there is a link for um, timeline graphs. So you can see a timeline graph that is really simple, not looking at um, actual dates, but looking at centuries and not looking at all denominations, but looking at it in a kind of easy quick glimpse uh, view all the way up to the movements and the things that are going on to, in today's churches. Also below that you'll find a prophecy panorama talking about um, really looking at what's um, going on today, <clears throat> what is past, what is future, you know, and then what's going on in the present church age now. So it's going to be taking you to the Old Testament, to the Messiah's um, birth and death, and then into the church age, the rapture of the church at the end of that, leading into the tribulation, um, then the second advent, and the millennial kingdom, and the white throne um, judgment, and into the eternal state. That's all there for you to actually um, go ahead and use if you want to be able to use it or just to view it. I always say view, use, and share everything that you find on this site. Also sub subscribe to this YouTube channel so I can reach more people with the content found on the site. Hopefully this is helpful. Also I have gone over some of the isms. Your fourth link on the front page is called Christian Isms. Not all of them are good. So we did already start what is an ism, what is a religious ism, what is a Christian ism, and then we got into dispensationalism, um, the talk about how it started with Darby, and where it actually, the debate that goes way back into scripture, the dispensations in within scripture. I did break out and break down what the definition of dispensationalism is, which is supersessionism, and also talked about all millennialism and preterism, defined all those terms so far. Today we're going to be talking about Calvinism, the definition of Calvinism, and the definition of Lutheranism. And here we go. Here we go today. Today we're going to be talking um, just briefly. Now all these definitions I'm giving to you, if you go on the site, you will see where I found the resources. This one's from Theopedia.com. A lot of times I use Theopedia. So here we go. <clears throat> Calvinism is the theological system associated with the reformed John Calvin that emphasizes the rule of God over all things as reflected in its understanding of scripture, God, humanity, salvation, and the church. In popular vernaculars, or vernacular, Calvinism often refers to the five points of Calvinistic doctrine regarding salvation, which makes up the acrostic um, tulip, tulip, so that's T-U-L-I-P capital, in its <clears throat> broad sense. Calvinism is associated with Reformed theology. Calvinism is named after a 16th century reformer, John Calvin, whose overall theology is contained in his Institutes of the Christian Religion in 15. 59. Sometimes Calvin is referred to by other names such as Augustinianism because Calvin followed Augustine, AD 354 through 430, 
in many areas of predestination and sovereignty of God. In the broad sense, Calvin can be virtually synonymous with Reformed theology. Or, <clears throat> Reformed theology, I like this, Reform Protestantism or Reformed theology, encompassing the whole body of doctrine taught by Reformed churches and represented in various Reformed confessions such as the Belgic Confession of Faith in 1561 or the Western Westminster Conference of Faith in 1647. That is Calvinism. Now we're moving into Lutheranism. Here's a definition. This one's also from Theopedia. Theopedia. Lutheranism is the name used to describe the movement following Martin Luther's call to reform the Roman Catholic Church in the 16th century. It also refers to the authoritative doctrine of practices in the Lutheran churches and can be used as a general term for Lutheranism or Lutheran churches worldwide. Opponents of Martin Luther, 1483 to 1546, first applied the term Lutheran to the followers in the early 1520s as a nickname to demonstrate the human origins of the movement. The Lutheran movement led to the division of the Western Church as new Protestant communities emerged around the world. Lutheran scholar Carl E. Baton, or Brayton notes that new ecclesiastical structures at first intended as interim arrangements until unity could be restored eventually <clears throat> became permanently established in separation from the Roman Catholic Church as of 2000 there are roughly 70 million Lutherans worldwide of whom between 9 and 10 million live in the United States and Canada. That is Lutherism. So let's talk. Um, looking at these different movements that were started by men. Okay, so a lot of people are trusting in Augustine and John Calvin and going to, um, with predestination and that um, God predestined everybody that would come to know him. So some people were born into the world to go to hell, and some people were born already predestined to be in heaven. So why are we here if there's no choice? Right? So why would you have to live this life if God already knew who was going to heaven and hell? He knows all things. He knows the beginning, the middle, and the end. But it was a choice that we made. He doesn't live in time. He created time. So that's exactly why you have, your name needs to be written in the Lamb, it's Lamb's Book of Life, right? So it is your choice. We are either choosing to go to heaven or we're choosing to go to hell. And that is the major decision that you'll make in this short lifetime. Where do you want to spend eternity? Because you will spend eternity somewhere. It is a free gift of salvation to all that come to the knowledge, right? All mankind will have a choice to lay down their life and pick up their cross and take the and believe in the free gift of salvation, the price that was paid by God, God's only begotten Son, that He paid it all in His innocence and perfection for our fallen sinful nature. The ultimate price is He had to lay down His life for the rest of us. So that is the choice. Then I think about, look at the history of these guys. Um, what were they really about? Don't just trust somebody that's come out of seminary school and has all these degrees. Or trust somebody that says that they're an anointed Bible teacher. You need to do your own research. You need to look at world history. Go back and look at all the denominations, where they're started, what their roots look like, and really stand on what Jesus taught in its entirety, the Bible. It is finished. The Bible was finished from beginning to end, from Genesis to Revelation. Finished. 
nobody's supposed to add or take from the, to the Bible, right? At the end of Revelation, it does say, no man is to add or take from this book. So if you think they're only talking about Revelation, then you look at Proverbs, where it says, if you add anything to these words, you are a liar, right? So it's not just said in Revelation. So I would look at these things that were started by man, look at the life of Martin Luther, look at the life of John Calvin, see who their influences were, see that what, what kind of life they lived, um, were they steadfast, what, what, was, what were they rooted in, and see if it really lines up with Scripture. Look at Scripture in its entirety, entirety dividing the truth correctly. Find a good Bible teacher that's teaching through the entirety of Scripture, including eschatology. How can you take 27% of the Bible and throw it out and say it all happened in AD 70? Or you're taking some stand that you are in a millennial kingdom as the church age and you're ushering in the kingdom of God. I think about all these things, supersessionism, where we are now Israel, where the churches, all the promises to Israel have been transformed or transferred to the church. So I would look at all these different isms out there and question the who, what, where, when, whys. Do your study in the Bible yourself to see who, if somebody's teaching you something is accurate. And if God says a thousand years, he means a thousand years. It's literal. Like, I, and, and that's why I'm thinking to myself, it's simple, it's literal. It said even a child can understand. It's a literal translation of the word of God. Yes, you do need a steadfast Bible teacher to help you. Um, divide the truth in its entirety but check everything that that person is saying against the Word of God there are two Bible teachers on the light of deception pastor Chris Quintana from Calvary Old Path teaching through the entirety of the Bible talking about the things that are going on in today's world as, re as related to deception also dr. Andy Woods from Sugarland Bible Church is also talking about many things related to the kingdom now theology related to um, the bible in its entirety you'll see a pastor's point of view dealing with the times that we're living in so he does talk about some of the isms that are out there as well related to globalism and this new world order and how um, you're getting off base and following after movements and man you need to get back on course and stand on the entirety of scripture and be faithful steadfast, sober-minded, knowing that it's about God and not about us. Humble, meek, occupying, serving. None of us will earn our way to heaven, but we sure can be obedient and faithful to the call. I hope all these isms help you stay out of the light of deception. Until next time, thank you.